This is a perfect agent speedrun guide and it's made with the gold leaderboard crown in mind. Um, I'm going to set some times and this first level I get 3 minutes 21 seconds. This is more than enough to get the gold star award on the leaderboard and uh, for those of you that don't know getting a gold star you have to complete all 21 solo missions on perfect agent in under 1 hour 35 minutes. I am consciously setting times that are faster than needed uh, to get the crown and I'm doing this to give you a better chance of uh, reaching the target time which I'll set in each level. I'm also going to show you some hints and tips that will make completing the level a bit faster like just there now where I shoot through the glass that probably saves some time that's entirely optional if you want to do that you can and I'll talk a little bit more about uh, what to do and what not to do later. Um, first of all I think it's just better just to show you my playthrough and that way you'll get a good chance of understanding what you have to do in each level. You'll notice there's a timer on screen and I've edited that into the video to make it easier to see. Um, you can actually put uh, the time on screen and I would advise anyone that's speedrunning to do this. You go into the display options and show mission time I think it's called but I'll show you how to do that later on in the video. Uh, but this is to give you a guide as to so for example uh, JMM got uh, the guy into the elevator in about 1 minute 20 seconds and this way it'll give you a rough guide on how to rank yourself while you're playing these missions. I'm going to talk a little about your target time. Crowning Glory achievement is intentionally designed to be very vague. When Perfect Dark was originally released on the Xbox Live Arcade no one actually knew what most of these crowns were until people started actually unlocking them. There were no instructions on how to get any of these uh, other than a little image and the name of the crown. So people had to basically guess what these, what the requirements were to get some of these. And that's why some of the later board crowns like the name is Dark, Perfect Dark, is still not really known what the requirements are for that. We know it's something to do with headshots and something to do with uh, not having auto aim on and completing the game uh, in Perfect Agent. but. Other than that, we don't exactly know what the requirements are. So a lot of these crowns are quite vague and uh, for this one, I found one of the hardest things was to understand what was a good time for each level. Um, it was hard to, you know, you can't just take every level and just divide it by the number 21 because some levels are much shorter than others. So when I was originally going for this crown, I just had to try and set the best time possible. But I have since found out that you can get much better times um, using uh, different strategies and tactics. Which I'll go into a little bit later. So the target time is the time that I originally set when I first got the achievement. And actually when you add up all the target times it actually adds up to 1 hour 30 minutes. So there's even a bit of leeway in the target times I'm setting. But obviously if you do better in the earlier levels it means that you can be a lot lazier in the harder levels. And it may even be that um, you might not even have to speedrun some of the later levels if you've already set a reasonable time in them, uh, which is actually what I found. So that's the mission over and that's how I got my time of 3 minutes 21 seconds. Uh, but your target time is 4 minutes 30 seconds, so I've given you quite a bit of leeway time there. I'm just going to show you how to turn on your mission time because you might as well do it now. So first of all go to help and options, then settings and display and if you scroll down you'll see a little thing called show mission time and if you turn that on you get a little timer in your levels from now on. It's quite small and it, but you should be able to just about make it out. Okay so now I'm going to go into some mistakes that you might make in this level. Um, Perfect Dark speedrunning is all about trial and error. Now the first you'll come up across is this glass. Uh, sometimes you'll actually fall and get trapped behind the glass or if you hit on top of it sometimes you'll get trapped on it. Um, you may not want to do this tactic. Um, it saves some time when you get it to work but you don't always get it to work. Uh, this is footage of me actually when it did work and uh, it's weird. It's almost like you have to crouch in mid-air and you almost bounce under that little part and it does probably save like maybe 10-15 seconds which uh, might not seem like much but it really does count. The next thing I come across is this one guy, he is a pain. 
uh, you need to basically babysit him the whole way or else he'll try and run away like he's doing now. Um, you can, if he starts running away, you can get it under control and uh, sort of, you know, persuade him to get back in the lift. It doesn't take much to look away. You'll see here I'm actually trying to push him into the lift. Um, it doesn't take much for him to just change his mind and run away. Um, you basically have to continually point your gun at him. And even here when there's these guards, um, I thought, well, okay, I'll go back and try and kill some of these guards. Um, and that was enough for him to scream security help and that's pretty much your time's ruined. Um, what you'll notice is uh, what I do is I, I make him aware that I'm there and then I run away from him and that's because he then starts running towards the lift and uh, you'll notice there's a dialogue there where Joanna says uh, I've got a password problem and you'll want her to do that as close to the lift as possible and that way he'll get into the lift much quicker. If that dialogue box happens outside of his office, he walks really slowly towards the lift and it adds so much more time onto your clock and it opens up much more possibilities that he'll run away from you. So the best thing to do is try and get that dialogue box to happen as close to the lift as possible and make sure the lift door is open for him. The next problem you may come across is this corridor. Um, sometimes it'll be absolutely filled with guards depending on I guess how much noise you make and other times the coast will be clear. And you'll notice I just completed objective 3 while still having my gun out. And this is the only computer in the game where you can actually hack it whilst uh, wielding a gun. And that's a tactic I would really recommend you use because as you see people will burst in the door. Um, you'll probably will find there will be a lot of guards in this part. That camera doesn't actually work because you threw a mine um, at the start of the mission but it will come back online depending on how quickly you can do this bit. So you'll notice here that the hallway is completely empty and that is quite common actually. Um, so that gives you some chance to do what you have to do here. So the minute he says right I'm in, make sure and knock him out or else he'll destroy the computer. And you'll see there quickly I just use my uh, data app link and then switch to my gun and turn back to the door. And that's a tactic I would recommend you use because people will possibly come in the door. So the next problem you might have is placing this second mine. Um, a good tactic I actually use is hiding up against this seat because it prevents people from shooting you, although this can happen when people pour in. Uh, you'll see I had a pretty good health bar there but it was taken off me quite quickly. Um, but I do think uh, hiding up against that couch is a good idea because it prevents them from shooting you in the back. Um, you'll see that sometimes there can be as little as three people in this room, sometimes as many as five and I just flat gave up at this part because I just I knew it wasn't going anywhere and um, which is a bit of a pain so um, here's one that there was only four people in it um, and I think I do use the tactic of going up against the seat no maybe not um, but I do I managed to actually sneak out past all these guys and this is one of the times where I just had to really bite my tongue because I was right at the door but the very last enemy just uh, completely drained my health. This is another one of the times where there are only three enemies in the room and if you can get that it's pretty good. I mean I don't know, I think it's partly luck. Um, I accidentally pushed the seat there but there wasn't too many enemies here and they're all kind of outside and I managed just to run past them. Um, again the very, I think it was one of the the guys behind me, there was quite a lot in that room. If you can try and shoot as many people in that room as possible, it's just going to make your odds so much better. Okay, so here's footage of how I actually completed the level. And there was three guards in here, and I think it was because there were so many guards outside the room that it didn't let any more spawn in here. I have seen tactics where people just run into this room and just throw a mine and run back out, but I just wasn't willing to take that risk. Um, I. I just didn't want to risk dying so I thought I'd try and take at least some of the people inside the room out. Um, the explosion there actually forced me out the door which sort of sped things up. And I try and kill or at least hit as many people in this room as possible. It all depends on the guard animation you get whether or not you get hit. Um, but if you can at least get one shot into them it sort of slows them down and doesn't let them shoot at you. So I actually thought that when I played this that I hit all of the... Uh, enemies in this room, I only hit three of them. The fourth one there was some weird Pulp Fiction stuff going on where every bullet hit the back wall and didn't actually hit him but I guess I just got lucky on the animation and I just didn't get shot and it gave me enough time to quickly get into the elevator. 
The next level in the speedrun guide is Datadyne Research Investigation and you can see that by clicking the video to the left. There's also an individual crown for this level called No Help Needed and if you'd like to watch a video on that you can just click the right video. If you'd like to support my channel you can do this on Patreon um, by clicking the orange button. And this will give you early access to my videos and will be a big help to my channel. You can stay in touch with me on Twitter or on Google Plus, or you can just subscribe to me for the next video. I hope this video helped you to speedrun this level.